What's up guys, so tonight I'm going to be lowering the uh, R1. Literally the night that I bought the bike, I ordered the lowering link, so I'm going to be installing the stuff he's racing, um, fully adjustable turnbuckle style lowering links. They're the same ones that I used on my other R1, so I'm familiar with them and I really liked them, the adjustability of them. It's not just um, pretty much one size lower, so uh, I'm able to adjust it anywhere between like three quarters of an inch all the way up to like three and a half inches. So I want to show you, this is what I look like on a bike right now. And this is pretty much how much I'm tiptoeing it. And this is on a nice even surface. It's not like being on the road where sometimes, <laughs> like I can barely touch the ground on my right foot right now. So I'm kind of like teeter-tottering the bike. Um, this makes the bike kind of uncomfortable for me to ride. So I'm going to be lowering the bike tonight. So unfortunately, Alright guys, so I'm kind of on to step two. I ended up having to remove that big ass catalytic converter so I can get to those dog bones right there. Those two silver things that look like dog bones are what we're going to be taking out and replacing with the turnbuckles. Man, I'm telling you, since I'm at this point right now where I got the exhaust pretty much entirely removed, what I would do right now to have a freaking aftermarket pipe to just install right now instead of putting this all back together. but. I don't have one yet, so bummer. Pieces, these pieces, stock muffler. <laughs> Look at the size of this catalytic converter. This thing's got to weigh like, I don't know, 25, 30 pounds. That thing's heavier than dog shit. And the bike just doesn't sound that great um, with all the stock setup, but I'm sure you guys get that. So um, I'm going to put it on the jack stands now, and uh, we're going to raise this. So see when we get there. All right. These are the uh, stock linkages here that come off the R1, the dog bones. We're going to re be replacing them with the Suppy Racing or Suppy Performance turnbuckle style lowering links. And right there, the with it being longer, that's going to lower the bike, believe it or not. So it looks like we're, I don't know maybe half an inch gonna be half an inch lower already just putting the turnbuckles on so that's what I'm gonna do right now I had to remove the bolt that goes right here for the kickstand and then loosen the front one that way I can move the kickstand out of the way to get this bolt out that connects the linkages to the swing arm mount here so that was unexpected and kind of sucks because those were hella tight so I'm gonna get these uh, these ones on here and this little notch right here in the linkage indicates that this bolt right here is a left hand thread so it's gonna be reverse of what you would normally do like righty tighty lefty loosey kind of thing so I'm gonna put both of those facing down that way all I have to do is turn them the same way. So I'll come back to you when I get them installed. We'll drop the bike and then we'll lower it. Well, that didn't make sense. We'll take the bike off the jack stands and then we'll lower it just by. All we have to do is get a crescent wrench and just turn this middle turnbuckle. Make these longer in that will then lower the bike because it's pushing up on the suspension. So that's what we're going to do. Alright guys, I got the bike completely lowered, completely put back together. The exhaust is all on, the shields are all on. The one thing that I'm going to have to do that I did on my 2004 R1, I had it pretty much about just this low. I had to cut the kickstand. Um, Suppies does sell an adjustable kickstand, so I might get that uh, just so it looks a little cleaner because I literally like cut my kickstand on my old bike and just left it that way. Um, I'm going to probably end up getting the adjustable kickstand. The bike doesn't fall over. I stood on this side of the bike and kind of pushed on it. It's going to take some doing to do or some doing to tip it over but it's definitely much easier than when it was at the stock ride height for sure.
Um, I'm super comfy on the bike. Tomorrow, we're gonna take this for a ride. And I, I'm definitely gonna be much more comfortable on this bike. And I set my helmet up with a microphone. You can't see it. And I got another Sony action cam that I'm gonna put on the side of the helmet so I'll be able to tell you what I like about the new seating position, the new ride height, how I'm able to really flat foot this thing, and I'll show you that here in just a second, versus what the bike was like when I first got it with its really high tail end. Um, so that'll be for tomorrow, but other than that, got the new lowering links in. Let me lay back down. <sighs> Let me get my light. There we go. There's the lowering links here. Got them all adjusted. There's another one that looks just like this on the other side. And the bike is about two and a half inches lower. If not like two and three quarters um, lower than what it was. So let me show you what it looks like when I'm on the bike. All right, so. I'm able to completely flat foot this bike now. Much, much, much more comfortable. Pushing it's going to be easier. Backing out of my driveway is going to be easier. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys.